Fifty years ago, in 1964, the Wilderness Act was signed into law by the United States Congress. This act allowed for the establishment of the National Wilderness Preservation System, which now includes 758 areas in 44 states and Puerto Rico. The United States was the first country in the world to define and designate wilderness areas through law. In 1964, our nation's leaders formally acknowledged the immediate and lasting benefits of wild places to the human spirit and fabric of our nation. That year, in a nearly unanimous vote, Congress enacted landmark legislation that permanently protected some of the most natural and undisturbed places in America. The Wilderness Act is one of the most successful U.S. environmental laws, standing for almost 50 years without a substantial amendment, and it continues to be the guiding piece of legislation for all wilderness areas. What is wilderness? What is it? What does it mean? Surely it's more than legislation, more than boundary lines on a map. But what is it? The legislation itself contains some clues or guidance about the purposes and characteristics of wilderness, things like lands designated for preservation and protection in their natural condition, or an area where the earth and its community of life are untrammeled by man, or an area of undeveloped federal land retaining its primeval character and influence without permanent improvement or human habitation, or an area that has outstanding opportunities for solitude or a primitive and unconfined type of recreation. These are all meaningful, useful, and at times poetic descriptions of wilderness. But for me, they don't completely describe my idea of the value of wilderness. Throughout our lives, we're measured by different things in society. In school, we get grades that reflect our performance. We get medals and trophies and degrees that reflect our athletic or intellectual prowess. Later in life, we receive various salaries for the jobs that we do. All of these are measures or markers of our status, progress, and overall place in the world. And though these societal measurements are meaningful, for me, it is wilderness that will always be the ultimate yardstick. Wilderness will be the ultimate index by which I measure my status, progress, and overall place in the world. I say this because when you enter a wilderness alone, unsupported, you quickly realize that the wilderness really doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about the grades you got in school. It doesn't care about your medals, your degrees, or the size of your salary. The first time you measure yourself by the yardstick of wilderness, you may quickly find that you are indeed very small and perhaps inconsequential. But as you spend more time out there, as you acclimate to the solitude, the quiet, as you rise to the physical and mental challenges that you can only encounter in wild country, you find that perhaps you aren't quite as small and inconsequential as you first thought. With each night spent alone on the ground in wilderness, with each season experienced out of doors in wild country, you can actually start to grow. You grow physically through the realization that your body is healthy and strong. You grow mentally through the realization that pain and discomfort are not going to kill you. And you grow spiritually through the realization that you are part of a community of life that was here long before you were born and will be here long after you pass. And this is why, for me, wilderness will always be the ultimate yardstick. When I was a boy, my dad took me out to the West Mesa in Albuquerque, New Mexico to show me where he grew up. I remember him waving his arm across the mesa and telling me that nothing was there when he was a kid. None of the development, none of the subdivisions or the shopping malls. Nothing was there, just desert. I remember wondering then if this was a good thing my dad was talking about or a bad thing. I still wonder about that. And to be honest, I have to admit that I still don't really know the answer. However, I do know one thing. I know that when I take my kids to the special places in my life, when I take them to the sacred spots of my youth in the Gila and Aldo Leopold wilderness areas, I know that those places will still be there, undeveloped and untamed. And I also know that when my kids are ready, 
when they have had their fill of the many ways that our society weighs and measures them, when they're ready to pick up a backpack and slip into the silence of wilderness to take their own measure of existence, I know that at that time, thanks to the foresight and vision of our forebears 50 years ago, I know that wilderness and wild country will still be there to greet them. For this, I am grateful.